Hello, I'm Sam Wadsworth, the Chief Scientific Officer of Ultragenics Gene Therapy. Today, I'll be giving a brief overview of Ultragenics, present the current product development pipeline with a focus toward AAB gene therapy, and then review the status of our current gene therapy clinical trials and our gene therapy platform. Let's get past the safe harbor slide. At Ultragenics, we're focused on bringing therapies to patients suffering from rare monogenic disorders with high unmet medical need, clear biology, and in most cases where no treatments are available. This vision is allowing us to build an exceptional company with strong commercial growth, expanding clinical trials, and also strong AAV product uh, manufacturing. We have a strong and diversified pipeline employing four different therapeutic modalities, which are color coded on this slide, and we have four approvals. We have ongoing clinical trials in AV gene therapy and in nucleic acid therapy, and other candidates entering clinical testing in the near future. Turning to clinical trials now, glycogen storage disease 1A or GSD1A is a monogenic glucose metabolism disorder stemming from a lack of glucose 6-phosphatase activity. Patients with GSD1A have a variety of significant health issues, such as impaired growth and multi-organ complications, but also can experience bouts of severe hypoglycemia that can be life-threatening. There are no drugs available for GSD1A patients. Rather, they rely on severe dietary restrictions and oral glucose replacement therapy, which is actually dietary, dietary cornstarch. This is given in carefully controlled doses as a slow-release source of glucose. Children with GSD1A have to be awakened during the night to ingest cornstarch, and any mistake in this nighttime dosing can lead to seizure or even death of the child. Patients with GSD1A have to manage access to cornstarch throughout the day, as well uh, as which can be complicated. And this includes when traveling, which of course we don't do much of today, um, as indicated in the right side of this slide, where patient three is, has reduced the amount of cornstarch that person has to carry in their suitcase. This slide demonstrates that all patients in the trial, all patients in the trial, I want to emphasize, responded to the DTX-401 therapy by reduction in their dependence on their prior treatment, in this case, cornstarch. And these patients have an improved ability to maintain euglycemia. We expect to enroll patients in the phase three trial in the first half of this year. The trial design is shown at the bottom of the slide. It's a fairly standard placebo controlled trial uh, with patients, the placebo patients crossing over into the treatment arm. DTX301 is a monogenic disorder affecting the urea cycle due to deficiencies in the enzyme ornithine transcarbamylase, or OTC. When the urea cycle is not functioning, toxic levels of ammonia build up in the blood. High levels of blood ammonia have multi-organ toxicity, including neurological toxicity, which is irreversible, and also can lead to cognitive defects and death. Liver transplantation is the only curative treatment but restricted diet and ammonia scavengers can provide benefit to patients. However, current treatments do not address the core urea cycle defect, but gene therapy has this potential. Two thirds of the patients participating in the clinical trial have shown positive responses, including discontinuation of alternative medications, such as ammonia scavengers, and have liberalized their protein-restricted diets, which means that they can actually eat meat in their diet. 
We expect to enroll patients in the phase three trial in the second half of 2021. And like BTX 401, this is a fairly standard placebo controlled trial with those placebo patients crossing over into the treatment arm. Our third active AAV gene therapy clinical trial is for Wilson disease, a disease of copper metabolism. Copper in the body must be carefully chaperoned due to its toxicity. Defects in a protein called ATP7B, a major player in cop copper metabolism, can lead to liver failure, neurological deterior deterioration, and even death. Our Wilson disease AV gene therapy candidate called UX701 has shown efficacy in a relevant animal model of Wilson disease, which is shown on the right side of the slide. The IND for Wilson disease has uh, recently cleared and we'll be initiating a seamless single protocol uh, phase uh, one, two, three clinical trial this year. The CDD and Duchenne programs are at earlier stages and I won't be covering them today. In the next part of my talk, I will be giving an overview of our AV product manufacturing platforms. At Ultragenics, we employ two platforms that are shown on this slide. Utilizing the familiar 293 cell plasma transfection platform enabled us to get a fast start on our two lead programs that I've just mentioned, OTC and GSD1A. We're currently manufacturing those products at the 800 liter suspension bioreactor scale. There is the potential to transition these products to the HeLa PCL platform at a later date, should we choose to do so. We also employ the less familiar HeLa producer cell line platform. There is a strong safety track record for this platform with greater than 500 patients being exposed to HeLa-based product with no safety issues. HeLa PCL product is in clinical use by our partner buyer for hemophilia A at the 2000 liter scale. And we're preparing for manufacturing of the CDD product and of course, Duchenne muscular dystrophy as that program moves along. Manufacturing scalability is becoming increasingly important as several clinical applications are employing product doses in the E14 genome copies per kilogram range or even higher. The approved Zolgensma product and several candidates for Duchenne muscular dystrophy are familiar examples of this high dosing. In 2020, we entered into a technology uh, partnership with Daiichi Sankyo for our AV technology platforms. And we also recently announced that we broke ground on our own manufacturing plant for AV gene therapy products, both at the clinical stage and for approved products. Several of the important features of the AV, uh, the HeLa uh, PCL platform are shown in this slide. So I will spend a couple of minutes walking you through them. First, the rep and cap AV helper functions, as well as the AV vector genome, were introduced into the HeLa cell under drug selection. Clones are then selected on the basis of pre-established yield and quality criteria. In nearly every case, a high-performance PCL will have the AV vector genome integrated into the AVS1 locus, which is the natural integration site for AV virus. AV production is triggered by infection with AD5, resulting in the production of the desired AV product as well as AD5. Thus, the PCL platform re recapitulates the AV life cycle for the production of AV gene therapy vectors. The AV product is purified via commercially scalable column chromatographic operations while the AD5 is inactivated and removed. AV vector yields are usually greater than 111 GC per mil, often significantly higher, as you can see in the graph on the upper right corner of this slide, three different uh, PCLs showing yield, as well as the stability of the product yields that are maintained through cell 
cell passaging for cell banking, research master and working cell banks. A very important property of the HeLa PCL platform is the high proportion of full particles in the harvest. Examples of harvest material with 70 to 80% full particles are shown in the bottom right. This feature can obviate the need to further enrich the product for full particles. Finally, this slide depicts in the lower left, the research to GMP manufacturing continuum for a HeLa PCL. Early characterization after clonal selection is performed in the amber microbioreactor system that we have shown is predictive of GMP manufacturing at the 2000 liter scale. <clears throat> the data shown in the prior slide was from what we call the 2.0 version of the HeLa PCL platform. The benefits of HeLa uh, 2.0 over the initial platform include a one log improvement in product yield, more streamlined clonal selection, and much higher probability of, um, of attaining uh, the clone that you desire. HeLa 2.0 is currently being used for Wilson disease product manufacturing and CDD. We envision the potential for even further engineering improvements in this system, this time focused on genetic alteration of the HeLa cell itself, a platform that we refer to as HeLa 3.0, which we anticipate using for Duchenne. The basic concept was based on the fact that the HeLa PCL system recapitulates the AV life cycle. We reasoned that the HeLa cell likely has gene expression networks that evolve to suppress AV as a virus and that harvesting the knowledge of such networks could be used to improve AV vector yield. To explore such networks, we employed RNA-seq to compare gene expression in the parental HeLa cell as compared to several different HeLa 2.0 PCLs. RNA-seq identified almost 5,000 genes for analysis with 11 top candidates emerging as front runners. We carried out siRNA knockdown experiments on the top 11 genes in three different PCLs in triplicate and analyzed AV production titer. Knockdown of four genes indicated by the colored bars gave the most significant improvements and were chosen for further study. It is important to point out that the PCLs employed here were already highly optimized, high producing uh, cell lines. The top two genes, KCNN2 and RGMA, were chosen for creation of gene knockouts via CRISPR. The top performer in each case yielded approximately threefold increase in yield over the parental PCL. To address the question of whether knocking out of, one, uh, of more than one of the genes in a cell would be additive, we conducted dual siRNA knockdowns. In two different PCLs shown on the left and the right, the dual knockdown of KCNN2 and RGMA gave rise to a full log of yield increase over the parental PCL. These data demonstrate that engineering of the basic PCL platform has the capacity of dramatically changing the economics of AV vector production. And we do not believe we've reached the limit of yield improvement uh, yet. So to conclude, um, gene therapy uh, is deriving clinical benefit uh, across the entire field and bringing uh, benefit to patients and approvals are actually occurring. At Ultragenics, we're working hard to accelerate clinical development of an increasing number of gene therapy products. We're making significant investments in AV gene therapy technology and manufacturing to ensure the most timely and cost-effective uh, bringing of these products to patients. Our clinical experience coupled with our technology advancements is enabling pursuit of larger patient populations such as Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Thank you for your attention.